Ed. Yeah, well, we're kind of on holiday. We didn't come by plane, we came by car, because this is Portland. It is absolutely gorgeous, and it's only just off the south coast, off Dorset. It is, but we're here to do a job. We've got to build a garden, haven't we, Mark? Remember Always, that? Always, yes. Yes. I've done the design, we've got the materials, we've got the plants, but there is a catch, isn't there? Yeah, there's a catch. There's only one deck chair. No, the catch is... They've got to answer all his questions to win the plants. That's yeah, the but you know about that, don't you? Anyway, we've got to crack on because there's work to be done. <laughs> By the way, guys, I know it's very coarse sand. Sand castles will not work. No, don't nick any of those pebbles either. Today we're with Marlene Fisher, who's lived here for three years and shares the garden with her fantastic golden retriever, Seb. She's being helped out by her brother-in-law, Paul Hunt. Marlene's a healthcare worker with little time or money to spend on her garden. So can the garden invaders come to the rescue? I think so. Uh, there's a lot of clover in your garden, Marlene. You could say that, and a few thistles. Yeah, why? Uh, well, simple reason, I'm not a very good gardener. It's not very good, is it, Joe? No, it's not good. It's really, really not good, actually, this garden. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got a Route 1 path right down the middle. I don't know, in going nowhere, a single path going nowhere. We've got um, weeds either side of it. We've got a bit of paving out the back here. Um, lots of potential. It's been a bit of a kind of up and down few years, though, hasn't it, for you? I mean, that's a serious yeah, answer that's... why you haven't done your garden. Yeah. So just take us through some of that. Um, well, my husband come down here with his business, Eric, and... Um, we found out he had cancer and he died three years ago, just over three years ago. So really, if the truth be known, I didn't have a heart really. I, I just used to mow it. But I feel now's the time to try and get it back to scratch, you know, and sort of make it as best I can, really. We're going to transform this for you in one day. Well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? OK, because you've waited three years for this. Absolutely, yeah. All right, and you'll be able Brilliant. to relax out here and enjoy your time away from work. Beautiful. But there's a lot to do, yes. OK? So we've got to crack on. So you're going to come Pick with on. me. We're probably going to go and get a view of the sea somewhere, because I do like looking at the sea to do your yeah. gardening questions. You're going to stay with Mr Swifty. Yes. All right. Aren't we lucky? And sort yeah, the garden yeah. out. I think we could do a lot with this garden, Paul. The best thing about it is there's nothing, nothing we've got to keep. No dilemmas. It's Cheers, not mate. Much you do wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. It can only get better. Just... So what I've done is I've, I've done a sketch. I was on a train on the way down here, but now I'm here. I think I'm going to finish it off with it. Because the idea really is from here we're going to have a path here, going up round the back, yep. snaking round to a, a stone circle at the back. So there's somewhere to go to, somewhere to sit. Okay. With a nice view of the sea. A nice view of the sea and also catch the sun. You yes. see it's a sunny spot. Um, and then a couple of lawn areas, nice strong geometric circles. And then soften it with planting all the way around and maybe have another little seat there as well. So again, there's like more places to sit in the garden. Because yeah. the moment you just come out, and you just want to go straight back in again pretty Plonk much. Plonk a chair on this uh, alleged yeah, plonk, patio. Plonk a chair here, plonk a chair there, plonk a chair at the back as well. You know, yeah. make it a garden sort of, you know, just to relax in. And that's what Marlene needs. And that's what, exactly what she needs. So there you go, nice and simple. But do you think she'll like it? I think it's brilliant and she'll love it. Yeah. And Seb as well. Seb will like it too, absolutely. Right, thanks Lorna. Here's your Invader for a Day t-shirt. Wear that's that cool. with pride. And your steel toe cap boots. Steel toe Health caps. and safety issue. Protects my toes. Absolutely, you're going to need it because the first thing to do is get that path up. I can see why you live here. Yep. The whole of Dorset behind you. You would drive miles for a view like that, 138 to be precise, from my front doorstep. But it's worth every single centimetre of it. It is a it. beautiful county. It's stunning, isn't it? Yes. We've enhanced the view here yes, yes. by adding a whole load of plants that we've shipped in all the way from up country for you. For me? Your first group here are the trees. Oh, OK, lovely. those are a must. You must get those. All right, you're listening right. to that, Seb. You yeah, must get those. Yeah, he's helping me, he's helping me. Come right. this way. Yeah, sit down, Seb. We've then got shrubs. These are the kind of things you like in your garden. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic. Now, these we've called the exotics, OK? This is an exotic part of the world, all right? Down Subject. here. Right. Final group, group four. Equally exotic. These exotics are more architectural. Right. OK? <laughs> but to top it all off... Oh. That right. will be the finishing touch for your garden. A mm. teak 
table and chairs made from renewable sources, but it's down to Paul to get that. Oh, right. He's got to answer a horticultural question when we stop sweating. Well, in I'm the garden. sure he'll sort me out. I yeah? Mean, yeah, I'm sure he's good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, All right, your good. job, though, concentrate on these four groups of plants. Right. We're going to start over there with the trees. First up of these wonderful trees, Eucalyptus porciflora nifophila. To you and me, the snow gum. Absolutely wonderful. It's a native of Australia and it's grown for its decorative bark. Next up, Gladitsia sunburst, or the honey locust. It's a hardy deciduous spreading tree from North America. And finally, the olive tree. Archaeological evidence suggests that olives were being grown in Crete as long ago as 2500 BC. Ooh, that's old. Here you go, good luck. Right. Which word describes a piece of plant taken from a parent plant for the purposes of propagation? Is it a trimming, is it a cutting, or is it a seedling? A cutting. You don't want to confer with Seb about this? Nope. You're absolutely common on your own. That's about the only one I think I'm going to get it right, so I'm going to stick with it. Of course, it's the correct answer. <laughs> yes, that was easy, Thank wasn't you. it? You've done it. They're I on their it. way into your garden. Oh, beautiful. Lovely, lovely. The invaders are having to run three miles backwards and forwards, forwards to the house. Yes. That'll do it. Now, this garden has got nothing in it at all. It's an empty blank canvas, which is great for a designer like me. I'm going to leave this hard paving here because it's a practical surface, but from then on, it's all mine to just do what I want with. So what we're going to do is put a nice meandering path going from one side through to the other. It gives a lovely movement to the garden. And over here, we're going to put a seat in, just a bench, somewhere to rest, somewhere to sit, in amongst all the planting. And this path carries on round. What we've done is introduce some strong geometry with these two circular lawns here. There's one here, one here. They're going to be easy to maintain, but still quite generous sizes. I think they're going to work well. And then the path meanders on, and as we walk through here, we've got these boundaries to deal with. At the moment, they're just chain-link fencing. You can see right through them. They're not particularly attractive. So we've got to deal with them somehow, maybe clad them, thinking about that at the moment. And then the path leads you round right to the back of the garden, so it's a good use of space all the way to the back here where we're going to put a stone circle in and this area here is going to catch the evening sun and also you've got that great view of the sea. Now you need some more plants for the garden. Right. The next group of plants up for grabs are the shrubs. The best of this bunch for me is the hibiscus wazo blue or bluebird. It's probably native to tropical Asia. It's the national flower of Malaysia. Next up, Vitex agnus castle, or the chaste tree. It's native to woodlands and dry areas of southern Europe and western Asia. Caryopteris cladonensis heavenly blue, or bluebeard. It's very drought tolerant and loves full sun. Bet it's enjoying today. Here is your question. Good luck to both of you, you big floppy tongue dog. You help me too. Which popular garden perennial belongs to the Primula family? Is it primrose? Tulip or carnation? Primrose. Is it a guess though? Or do you actually know? I thought, well, I actually know. You're right, it's the right <laughs> answer. Very good. Well, see, I, I actually know. I put not. some doubt in your mind there, didn't I? See, very yeah, good. Well naughty. done. They are going into your garden as well. We've transformed this back boundary by putting a fence inside the old fence, because the other one was a bit ugly. But this is great, a lovely cream colour, and it changes the whole mood of the garden. Mark, you've professionally installed this. Yeah. That's correct. What's yeah. it made of, this? It's a steel, zinc alum steel. So uh, it has the strength of steel, but uh, the aesthetics of timber. Right, okay. But uh, probably the best advantage is there's no maintenance. Right. Uh, occasional hose down to keep it clean, lasts for a lifetime. Excellent. And take wind gusts for 130 mile an hour, providing it's installed correctly. Yeah, nice one. Well, yeah. don't let me stop you. Keep going. Thanks, Joe. 
But if you're looking for something a bit cheaper just to tart it up for a few years, this is great. This bamboo screening, we put on the old chain link fencing and just tied it to it. Now this will last, I don't know, about five years or something. And it costs 20 quid for a five metre stretch. So it really is quite cheap. But again, it's just sort of visually brightening up the whole space and it works very well. Another question for you. All right. And the group of plants up for grabs. Yes. You remember, they're just down there. Right. But they are the perennials. First up, Lobelia chupa. It's widely used by herbalists around the world for a variety of complaints. Porovskia superba Russian sage enjoys full sun and well-drained soil, and you've got to remember to cut it back to the ground in spring to enjoy fresh new foliage. And my favourite of this group, Canna Durban. It's a half-hardy tropical plant native to the Americas. So here's your question. Good luck. Which member of the Brassica family has both a purple sprouting and white sprouting variety? Is it cabbage, cauliflower or broccoli? Cabbage. That's the wrong answer. No. No, it's broccoli. Bro I yes, know. purple sprouting is probably the more common one. Oh, oh never mind. Never mind. Never I've mind. I've done Marley. very well. I've done very well. Doesn't matter. Listen, anyway, it's I'm good in a way. It's yeah, good I'm in a way pleased. for me yes. because it's quite a long way to your house, and I'd have yes. had to carry all the plants all the way down there. Right. I'm just going right, to check on them actually, by the way, just see how they get off. See how what they're doing. <laughs> oh my word, Marlene! What's that? It's not looking good. Is it? Oh, yes, it's even worse than I thought. I knew I couldn't leave Joe on his own for a minute. Sir, you've been here hours. Yeah. You've only taken up the turf and the path. You're being very rude. No, I'm just making a point because you're well through the day, sir. Yeah, and you know a job like this is all in the preparation. We've levelled it out. We've got the path all um, delineated. Good word there. Dealt with the boundaries. We've got the trees in. We, you know, we've broken the back of this job. So what more have you got to do, though? So we've got to put the, uh, the path down. Yeah, okay, I'm not telling you what it is. It's a surprise. Ooh, and aren't you the tease, eh? Absolutely. And we've got the uh, lawn to go down, and then we've got all the plants to go in. How, how are the plants doing? All right. First two questions, fine. Yeah. We got the trees in already, obviously. Uh, yeah. Third question, no go. Right. Or the third one. Okay, the old perennials. Oh. Keep preparing that for the turf. You want to get that down jolly soon. Thank you. Paul, sir. Hello there. How are you? What is Marlene like on an everyday basis? <sighs> Over the top. <laughs> yeah, well, we're getting that impression. But she's just so, so cheerful. Uh, considering what she's been through, it hasn't phased her at all. How much do you think this will mean to having this done? I mean, she has been through a very tough three years. You can't put it into words. I mean, she's now going to be able to come out into a, a wonderful environment and just relax. Fantastic. Just well, let's hope she loves it as much as you obviously do at the moment. And you so carry on with this, cos you've only done about three feet and you've got at least, I should think, 50. I'll see you later. Yeah. looking at? Nothing. <laughs> it's pointed towards your house. I was looking at my house. You're cheating, aren't you? I'm me, I wouldn't I do thought I like told that. you, Seb, we to make sure you didn't cheat. Said, Come on. Cheat. Come on. Cheat. I have to watch you like a hawk, don't I? Hey? Eh? Now, more plants required. Okay, and your last group up for grabs mm -hmm. are these. Agave salmiana is a succulent tropical perennial native to Central and South America. It's an excellent plant for containers, but its flowers only appear on older plants. Astelia silver spear forms a bold clump of sword-shaped silvery, flax-like evergreen leaves. It needs a rich, free-draining, moist soil. And Bescorneria eucoides. It's not looking at its absolute best now because in summer it produces a large flower spike of red and pink with green. Absolutely stunning. Plant identification question for you. Mm -hmm. You know what these are, don't you? Yes. What are they? Hydrangeas. That's true, but that's not the question. Oh, All right. shame, shame, <laughs> shame. I know that one. The question <laughs> is for those fantastic exotic plants. Right. Two different types of hydrangea here. The most yes. common colours for hydrangea are blue and red but the colour depends on what kind of soil they're grown in, OK, whether it's acidic or alkaline. What I need to know is which one of these two would you expect to find in acidic soil? Um, I would have said the blue. Hmm. 
blue, is it? It's <laughs> a correct answer. <laughs> well done, yes! You are yes. orange, aren't you? <laughs> I thought it was blue. Look at your girls over there going <laughs> mad. It's like you've got your own cheerleaders. Fantastic. All right, listen. Those plants, he's on his way back. Those plants are going into your garden. Oh, brilliant. All right, the only thing remaining yes. for you to do for That's us lovely. is a little DIY challenge. Oh, fine. Oh, right. Just to one side of the pile, sort of offset, put in this seating area. I'm going to get Mark to make a nice bench so that you can sit here in amongst all the planting, but look at the view across the sea. And what I've used here, extended off the path, are these cockle shells. They're great. They're a byproduct of uh, cockle farms, and they wash them and they boil them, so there's no salt on here at all. People are worried that there's going to be salt and it's going to affect the plants or the lawn. It's just not true. But what I like about them is they're a great texture, but at the same time they're very light, so they're good in a shady garden as well as a sunny garden. They tie in here with the coastal theme. So underneath here we've got a landscape fabric to stop them mixing with the soil, stop the weeds coming through. And then to edge it, to stop the cockles mixing with the soil to one side, we put this plastic edging in. Now I haven't seen this stuff before. It's great though, it's got these teeth, so you stick it into the ground. But at the same time, it's very flexible, so it's perfect for all these different curves that we've got in the garden. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this stuff, and it ties the whole garden together. Get your gear on. Right. There you Thank go, you. glasses. Right. Look, okay, I've got you the ones that are darkened because it's a lovely day in Portland. Gloves on. I Thank know, you very much. Glass, right, yeah, fine. There you go. Thank and you. there you go. Right, okay, you're sorted. Right. You're ready for action yeah. for your yeah. DIY challenge. Excellent. You have to be very careful when you're working with bamboo, okay. particularly because of splinters. Mm -hmm. All right, get that stuff in your fingers and it will really, really hurt. All right, and what I want you to make is some lights for the garden. These will plonk in the ground like that. You need to split oh, the lovely. top open into four, spread it open, right. then put a... Oh, I can't, I can't explain it. It'll go in the top there. It'll look like that. Oh, that's lovely. And then in there, yeah. you put a little tea light. Right. OK? Gotcha. Really nice that'll Absolutely. look in the garden in a nice autumnal evening, all right? Yeah. You've got one, two, three, four, five to make. Five. Quick as you can, love. Thank okay, you. OK, then. Time starts now. Glad you're doing it now. Mr Evans, where are you? Listen, I'm in here oh, looking no, for bits of my project. Again. Joe, you can't throw things like this away. It's an off-cut. Waste not one knot, son. Oh, no, you're going to make something with it, then. There's more of that in here, look, as well. <laughs> look, there's loads of it. All right, OK, OK, fine. What you do can, you want me to make? You can use that, but you also have to use this, OK? And I want you to make a nice seat. That looks like a puck of bit of wood, full size. It is, that's not an off-cut, that's a whole piece. That's the full piece. I know, we treated you. Out... <laughs> Straight out of the timber yard. I'm Absolutely. honoured. Absolutely, yes. But there is a, there is a trick today. Okay? Yes, which There's is. a time limit, OK? Because I know that you're so quick with your hands, and we're talking basic materials, few offcuts, you've got five minutes. Is that because you're feeling a bit guilty about the fact you're taking too long in the back garden? No, you've got is, five minutes. That is, that's, that's the reason, isn't it? I don't feel guilty Go about anything. Go back to work. Go back to work. Four minutes. It's taking too long today. Now, the soil in this garden isn't a bad base. It's sort of mainly clay. But at the same time, it's got quite a bit of grit in it, so it opens up nicely. But the big problem with the soil here is it's so compacted. Over the years, it's just been more and more compacted. And remember, before this was just a load of weeds and old turf. So what we've got to do, and the most vital thing, is to get air back into it and just keep rotivating and digging it and digging it. And then what we do is put some organic matter in with each plant that we're planting. And then each plant goes in. And now remember when you're planting, just to tease out the roots if they're like that. OK, because otherwise they just go round and round in a circle. And then, and then with the soil that I've incorporated the manure in, just backfill it and firm it in quite nicely around the roots so that all the roots are in contact with soil. And then give it a really good soaking. And then we're going to mulch all the soil over with a bark and over time, you know, the organic matter is going to get in there, we're going to get air back in there, and actually we're going to end up with quite a good soil eventually. Marlene? 
Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing? Well, what were you he doing, with Matt? Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing. It was just, it was just um, sort of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was were you having a little bit of help? Were you? Did you sweet talk one of the invaders into helping you? You minx, you. <laughs> it's quite tricky, though, isn't it? It is. Doing all this, and you do have to be. Don't worry about that one for now. Let's no, look at the ones not. you've done. That's the important all thing. Right, and these are good. No. They're very good. I look at that. I mean, compared bad, to, I? compared to the one we started with, I think that is a. Good job. It's not bad. Are you proud of that? Yes, very. Excellent. Yes. I like that. And you've now got five already. Yep. Don't worry about that one. This will be enough. Right. Okay. okay. Fine. For Mr. Swifty, I'll take those into the garden. You're done. So you pop indoors and I'll come yeah. and get you when the garden's finished. Brilliant. All right? Lovely. Thank Lovely you. Lovely jubbly. Thank you. Excellent. Bye. Barking mad. But we love her. This is one of my all-time favourite trees. It's the Olea Europea, or the common olive, and you can grow it in this country quite easily, especially here, where it's very mild because we're right next to the coast. It's got lovely silvery foliage, and it's perfect for these conditions because it can cope with a strong wind and salt-laden air. You can prune it back if you need to, but you know, I'll just let it grow. And it's quite slow growing anyway, so it's not going to get too big for this garden. This is another great plant for these conditions. And in most parts of the country, it wouldn't survive outdoors. You'd have to take it inside in a pot. But here, I'm putting it in the ground, and I think it's going to do quite well. It's called an agave americana, and it's got seriously a spiky foliage at the end here. So I don't think the dog will be eating it in a hurry. And its common name is a century plant, and that's because every 100 years or so, not that accurate, it will flower, and then it will die. Very sad, but it's only once every 100 years, isn't it? Right, there we go. All nailed in and sorted. Now, the reason they give me these projects is twofold. One is to keep me out of the way so I don't slow them down. But the second is to show that out of some very basic ingredients, in literally half an hour to an hour, you can make something really useful for the garden that you spend quite a lot of money on if you bought it from a garden centre. Now, it doesn't look too good from this side. What I've done is had one sleeper, and I've just chopped these small sections off to make the uprights, three on either side, and then screwed them together using these very long timber screws which are absolutely brilliant you can whack them in with a battery driven screwdriver you have a special bit for the end because it's like a spanner head on there but what i've done is screwed it in from the bottom here so that you don't get any screw heads on the top to ruin the look now it doesn't look brilliant from this side i said that but if you tip it up i've used that bamboo i found in the skip a bit of the old fencing to wrap it around the post just to conceal them a little bit and there you go urban chic kind of jungle orientated on the sea. Whatever you want to call it, that, for me, is a top sea. This is a very, very nice table, Paul. Feel the quality, sir. Beautiful. Parts of this could be 100 years old. Nice, isn't it? Beautiful. Very, and four chairs, plus a few candles and bits and pieces. This is what Marlene really wants. So much so, She's even watching you now. With the family. With the whole family are here, sir. Here's your question, good luck. In which section of the garden centre would you look for a honeysuckle plant? Is it the shrub section, the climber section, or the aquatic section? It's certainly not aquatic. And the honeysuckle we've got in our front garden is climbing all over the place. So I'd say the climbers. Correct answer, yes! Marlene, it's yours, <laughs> love! Yeah! Hey! The pressure's off. Are you pleased with that or what? Wonderful. Good, eh? Well, if someone took me breakfast, when I come down here on a sunny day? Perfect. Oh, Marlene's going to be delighted. I am she so chuffed. Is. Excellent. You pop into the house. That probably don't... means I'm going to get a kiss. You probably will, but don't, even if she does kiss you, don't say anything about the garden, all right? No. Can I say I've got the table? You can say. I think she knows, mate. <laughs> Your job now, before you have a look at the garden, is mm -hmm. just remind us what it looked like first thing this morning. Just describe it to us briefly. Oh, it was so boring, Mark. All it was is uh, just grass, um, buttercups and thistles. Go on then, open your eyes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's brilliant. We wanted to kind of screen that um, concrete yeah. fence from you, so we put up... 
This fence now is a really special fence. You don't have to maintain it, paint it, nothing. It will last a lifetime, okay? Because we wanted to keep it as low maintenance as possible for you. It's fantastic, Mum. All right, you've got your curving path now because the other one did really offend Swifty. Yes. Well, yes. it was a bit straight, but we called a Route One path, and it bang, bang. <laughs> <straight down laughs> no, at least you got a garden. Like you got it? a garden to walk through now, you know, which is the whole Brilliant. point. And you've also got somewhere to go. You see the stone circle? And Paul yeah. won top the. Man. Uh, you were, yeah. got you the were there. Right. My top man. You were there. You saw oh, it. You yeah. saw it happen. Yeah. Brother-in-law. Brother Over there, I've made you a bench. <laughs> Have an old cup of tea. Sit for your cup of tea. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm so grateful to everybody. It should be really easy to look after. We put the bark down, it's going to hold the moisture in, but you are going to need to water really regularly. And also the grass, you know, it's quite easy to mow because you've got a nice mowing edge now. Yeah. So just mow it Lovely. nice and clean. But again, nice. regularly mow it. Paul, one of the invaders, put a seat in the corner. You see that? Oh, it's hiding around the back. Oh, yeah. I love, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see it. What do you, what do you think? Some climbers to oh, go up the side. Right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, and that was lovely. Like when it. the climbers are up, it lasts yeah. a yeah. feature in the corner of the garden. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. You've had a tough three years. Yes. What does it mean to you to have this finished in one day? It's sorted. Well, right? it is absolutely out of this world, really, because, I mean, there's absolutely no way I could have done any of this without all your good, kind people's help. And, well, it wouldn't have happened. Let's put it that way. Bye. Cheers, guys. Look after it. Bye-bye, my Bye. darling. Bye. See ya. Bye. Top dog. Yeah, top dog. Really nice golden retriever. And what a lovely family. Yeah, I, know. I, I think it will be well looked after. Yeah, they're going to appreciate it, look after it. See, nice, simple geometry works in a space like that. It looks great. You don't have to make things too complicated. That is the lesson, isn't it? Absolutely. And what about Portland? What a gorgeous place on a day like yeah, this. And it's still a nice evening. Should we go down the beach? I think that's a good idea. That's yeah. another garden sorted. We'll see you next time. See you next time. You got any swimming trunks?